Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, oh shit. It's <laughs> uh, so old. Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Dot com, and this is a review of Sony's ZV-E10 vlogging camera. Now, we'll get into more of the vlogging aspect and why I think they need to stop calling it a vlogging camera soon, but we did take this camera out into the real world and we are using it right now to film this video so you can see it working in the real world. Now, when Sony sent us this vlogging camera, we took it out to a hockey rink. Why did we go to the hockey rink? Because I am trying out for the Jewish Olympics for 2022 in Israel for Team USA ice hockey. Go me. Hopefully I make the team, because I'm good. I skate well. You'll see how well I skate out here. I mean, just look at this guy on the ice. Gordon Bump, oh, f But before we go too much further, I do want to say that we are filming also with the Canon R5. Now, it's not fair to compare these two and say that, the you know, compare the video, because one is like a 60 some hundred dollar setup with the lens, and the other will get to the price a little later on. But just wanted to show you the difference between the ZV-E10 and what the Canon looks like. So you can be like, oh yeah, it's pretty good. Or no, it doesn't even come close. One other thing I should mention about both of these cameras is we have IAF working in full auto. So we're letting the cameras make the decision. So if I move and if something is wonky on the ZV-10, then you'll know that it's the eye tracking. We know that the R5 works basically perfectly, but just wanted to let you know. About a year ago, Sony released the ZV-1, which is a vlogging camera because it's meant for vloggers. That's what Sony called it. It has a 24 to 70 lens that's built in. It has a one inch sensor in there. And they said, and by they, I mean Sony, said that when they talked to different content creators, their biggest feedback was, we'd love to be able to change lenses and we'd also like to have a larger sensor. And I honestly say you shouldn't be asking real content creators, and by real, I mean people that do this for a living, because this camera's not really designed for them who, who, who are doing this all day, every day, but it's for the person who just wants to set it and forget it and be able to do some professional looking things. So now let's jump into what the camera looks like, how it feels, and tell you about all of the specs. This right here, this is the ZV-E. 10. It is a small, light, plasticky, cheap feeling camera as soon as you take it out of the box. It's almost like they stripped everything out of it that was not necessary to allow them to call it a vlogging camera and to keep the price way down. Because the price, in comparison to the feel, you're going to be like, all right, that kind of makes sense because other camera manufacturers are gonna be making cameras that are like $1,000 in comparison to something like this. So basically what they did is they took something like a A6100 and the ZV-1 and they're like, ooh, look at me, I'm a ZV-1, I'm an A6100, would you like to make out and have a baby? And they're like, okay. And then that's how we got the ZV E10. Oh, your helmet is so big. Now let's talk about the specs. You have a 24.2 megapixel APS-C size sensor inside of this camera. That is three times larger than the one inch sensor in the ZV-1, which means it is a three inch sensor. Kind of like my, oh wait, that, that doesn't make any sense because it's not actually a three inch sensor. That's not how it works. It's a one inch sensor, which actually isn't one inch either, but now you have a APS size C sensor in this small body. The ISO range is 100 to 32,000. It has a Bions ZX or Bions X, whatever they call it. I'm pretty sure that's the older processor. Like I said, they took a lot of old parts that were sitting on the shelf, and I don't know that they were old, and they're like, let's Frankenstein this camera, put it all together, let's make it do what it's supposed to do, and for them, it's supposed to be a vlogging camera, which I keep saying that vlogging is dead. They really need to rework it and say it's for content creators. Are you someone who wants to create videos for YouTube, who wants to live stream, who wants to webcam, who wants to have the ability to take control of your products and uh, uh, capture what you want to capture? Stop calling it vlogging because 
creators today do more than just walk around going, hi, this is uh, me going to get a smoothie. They do a lot more than that, so please give them more credit and start calling this a content creator camera. In terms of autofocusing points, you have 425 phase detection points that cover 84% of the frame. You've got real-time tracking plus IAF. And what I will tell you is when Steven was trying to film me playing hockey, I know I'm super lightning quick out there like Theo Fleury was, but he was having trouble trying to get it to lock on to me and track me. Now we use all of the Sony professional cameras and you would think that what works in those in terms of the settings would be similar in this camera and it was much more difficult to try and find those settings. And when I took the camera to my warehouse to photograph me just shooting pucks, I sat there and it was like, what mode do I put this on? Because it didn't make any sense compared to what I'm used to. Now for most people buying this camera, it's going to be their first entry into a Sony ecosystem. They won't know the difference. And honestly, I got so pissed off trying to set up the camera manually to use it that I just flicked it into auto and said, do your best because that's what most people are going to do with this camera. Now, this is pretty interesting. When, when Steven was shooting me on the ice, he was like, the, the stabilization doesn't seem to be kicking in. It doesn't seem to be as smooth as other Sony's. And the reason being is they say that it has steady shot. And we thought when they say steady shot, that that meant that it has image stabilization, mechanical image stabilization built into the body, which it does not. It is a digital stabilization only. Yes, it has active mode, but that's a digital form of stabilization that crops in and honestly wasn't very good at all. So just understand there is no mechanical image stabilization inside of this body. Hey guys, testing out the ZV what is this, E10? ZV E10. You might think that it's a, an Olympus. It's not an Olympus. Um, I came out here to the hockey rink. It's a flyer skate zone in Pennshawken, uh, mostly because I got new skates and I'm gonna be trying out for the Maccabi Games, which is called the, uh, it's the Jewish Olympics in, in Israel next year. So I'm gonna be trying out for the master's division for people that are 40 and over now that I'm 40. Um, so I've been skating around trying to shoot the puck. I mean, I'm, I'm actually a pretty good shot, but my back hurts. My feet hurt because this is the first time I've skated with these skates, but I will tell you, so much better than, than back in the old days when skates were, uh, I don't know, much harder to <laughs> break in, but I had these baked and I also had them custom built by Bauer. Um, so this is a vlogging camera. We are testing the vloggy vlog. I got a mic plugged into it. Steven's over there shooting with the uh, Canon EOS R5 just so we can see how that is. This thing's um, inexpensive and we're testing it out to see how it does. So. Let's skatey skate. 40 year old on the ice for the first time with these new skates that save Frono's photo. <sighs> this shit's hard, man. The older I get, the harder it gets. I know, that's what she said. Watch this, top shelf, top shelf, top shelf. Top shelf, let's go! Greatest hockey player ever. There you go. Top shelf, crossbar. He shoots and scores. That's not getting stopped. That's right. Oh, two up, two up under the crossbar. Did you get it, Steven? Who's the best hockey player since Eric Lindros? This guy. Let me jump in here real quick because I want to show you Fro Pack 3 in action on this photo right here, starting with Fifth Element. Fifth Element looks great, followed by Canadian Tuxedo. Then we've got Capone. Then we've got King Contrast, which gives it that cool contrasty effect, followed by MDMA and Prestige Worldwide, which is kind of universal. But check this one out from Fropack One. We've got one called Universal Soldier that gives you a really good starting point. So if you're looking to speed up your raw workflow or give yourself a great starting point, we created 15 all new custom Lightroom presets that you can check out right now at fronosphoto.com slash Fropack3. While you're over there, you can play with the sliders 
to see the befores and the afters. And if you decide to pick them up right now, they are currently on sale. Or if you'd like to grab Throwback 1, 2, and 3 together as the Triple Play Bundle, you can save even more. Now, let's get back to the video. Now, if you're wondering, what do we do if we're outside and it's super bright light and I can't see the LCD screen on the back? Uh, well, you, you don't do very much because it does not have an EVF. So if you're looking to shoot still photos here, you can shoot still photos with this camera. It's more for video, but it gives you the ability to shoot stills, but you don't have an EVF. And to me, for someone who likes to shoot photos, that may be a deal breaker. Now for other people, there is another option out there from Canon that's very similar to a camera like this. It has a built-in EVF. It's the M50 Mark II. We'll talk more about that at the end of this video. What it does have are some toggle switches that get you from video to stills to the S and Q mode, which is slow and quick for getting into the slow motion modes. So you know which mode you're going in. All you have to do is flick a switch and you get right into those modes. Just like the ZV-1, there are dedicated buttons for product showcase as well as background defocus. Product showcase is simple. You hit that button and say you're like Manny Mao. Is it Manny Mao? Manny Manu? Manny, Manny Mua. I had to Google like people that do makeup on the internet and Manny Manua came up. So Manny Mua, he's there. So if he has like his palette, I know a lot about makeup, palette. If he has his palette and he wants to hold it out to you, product showcase would focus on the palette and as soon as he moves it back to his face to put his eyeliner on, then boom, it's gonna focus back on his face. So that is a good feature to have. Now, if you don't want the background to be in focus, you could hit the defocus background button and it's going to do its best job at opening that aperture up. It's gonna compensate with the ISO the way that it needs to do it and it's going to expose for your face and hopefully blow out the background. Now it's not gonna be perfect in every situation depending on the lens that you have, but it's gonna do the best that it can possibly do. And that is a nice feature that was in the ZV-1 that's now in this camera. Here's a cool feature that's in the much more expensive FX3 from Sony that's in this ZV-E10. There's a zoom toggle switch. So if you put on a powered zoom lens, of which there aren't that many from Sony, you can actually toggle, move one way or the other, and it will use the power zoom. But also it will allow you to digital smart zoom in. You could toggle in and it's gonna digitally zoom with that switch. One of the most important things to remember when you're making video, if you're a content creator, is that your video could honestly look pretty terrible, but if it also sounds terrible, you're going to lose a lot of people. So in this case, Sony has taken from the ZV-1 the directional three capsule microphone. It's the same that's in the ZV-1, is also in this camera, and it actually is a pretty good microphone. So audio is super important, make sure you know that when you're filming video. If the audio sounds terrible, people are not going to watch. And another cool thing they built into this is a digital hot shoe. That means Sony sells some different accessories where you plug right into the hot shoe, the microphone, and there are no wires to plug in. So a good example of this is if you got one of Sony's shotgun microphones, plugged it right into this hot shoe, no wires needed, that means the wires won't get in the way if you're flipping out and rotating the screen that is on the back of this camera. Speaking of the screen, there is a small vary angle touch screen with the ZV-E10. We think that it's the same exact screen that you find on the ZV-1. It's small, it's not super bright, and it is a touch screen, but the weird thing about this camera is that it uses the old Sony menus. Now for anybody new coming to Sony, they won't know the difference, but why would you have new menus in all of your cameras, your newer cameras coming out, and then you take this and you put in the old menu, and that means that you also don't have touch functionality for a lot of different things. You can't touch the menu and actually activate it. It just doesn't do that for you. So there's limiting features now with the touch screen because of whatever they put into this camera, probably to keep the price down. Let me jump in here real quick. If you'd like me to send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you that guide for free. To add on to something borrowed or older technology put into this camera, the battery. It's using the W battery, not the George W battery, the just the, it's a W battery, which we, which we haven't seen for a long time, but you're supposed to get about 80 minutes of record time when you use that battery. Now, when we were shooting in the hockey rink, we went through two batteries. 
But keep in mind, it's a hockey rink. It's really cold. And when it's really cold, the batteries go quicker. The reason that it doesn't take a Z battery, if I had to guess, because the Z battery is better, is it's much bigger. And they would have had to make the grip much bigger to take that battery. And maybe they thought 80 minutes was enough, which it probably is. Just make sure that you have extra batteries with you or a USB-C charger because you have powered USB-C in the camera, which is actually what we have in it right now. We have the cable plugged in, which is what we do with the Canons all the time. We plug it into the camera so it, keep it keeps it powered up and going without worrying about running out of juice. There's a single SD card slot that is not on the side of the camera. You actually have to open up the bottom door. It's right next to the battery. You pop the SD card in there and you're good to go. Do the, do, am I upset that you don't have dual card slots? I mean, in an in a inexpensive camera like this, I don't think it matters. Plus, you're not going to be shooting redundant video most of the time. So the SD card slot on the bottom Bottom, though it's a pain in the ass to get to if you're on a tripod it's not that big of a deal you have one SD card slot but you do have a mic and a headphone jack unlike this M50 Mark II that just has a microphone jack this one has a headphone jack and a mic jack so if you're like Steven sitting next to the camera right now with headphones on he's plugged in so he can monitor my audio right now we have the Sony set to 4k at 24 frames per second now the 4k is oversampled from 6k and you could do up to 30 frames per second. And that's with full pixel readout. Now, an issue we saw is super duper jello effect rolling shutter. And we're not talking about like you're swinging the camera back and forth super fast. We're talking about subtle motions added to warping and jelloing, kind of like I don't know what that's from, but it's from something. It was so not good, because I don't want to say bad, but yeah, it was so not good that it was very similar to Canon's EOS RPs, which had a super duper jelloing effect when you moved the camera. This clip right here was shot at 1080p at 120 frames per second, and you do have full autofocus when you're in that mode. Now, how does it look? In most situations, if you have a lot of light, it's probably gonna look pretty good. Here's an interesting tidbit that Steven just let me know. The Sony is now past 30 minutes of continuous record time, which means you don't have a 2959 limit. We had to reset the Canons. We have two R5s running because they stop at 2959. One of the best features that manufacturers are finally putting into cameras that are video centric are tally lights, like in the front. I have a red tally light, so I know that the camera is recording. It's like, hi, Jared, I'm recording. Yeah, that's right, there's a little towel that smokes a blunt looking at me going, I'm recording, because his eyes are so bloodshot and red. Jared, I'm recording. Are you high? Do you want to get high? No, I don't tally. I'm at work. I don't do those things. At work. No, I really actually don't do those things. <laughs> you want to get high? No, we don't want to get high. Okay, you sure? That's just on the front, but on the back, on the LCD screen, just like the FX3, the screen lights up red with a red box around it. The, the Canon doesn't. You suck, Canon, you suck. I want a tally light from you. Uh, money truck's leaving. Oh well. Man, I have no idea what's going on. Don't forget to bring it down. <laughs> <laughs> Let me jump in here real quick and let you know that the Super Huger Mega Camera Giveaway is now officially live. That's right, I'm giving one of you the chance to win cameras and lenses valued up to $4,999, and it's absolutely free to enter. Head on over to bit.ly slash megafro2021 to get entered for free right now, but if you do purchase Fro Pack 1, 2, 3, or the bundles, or you already own them, you will score extra entries. Again, you do not need to make a purchase in order to win. Now, let's get back to the video. Here's a feature that came out of the pandemic that I don't know why it took companies so long to do, but the ability to use your camera as a webcam by just plugging it in. You can take this ZV-E10, plug it into the computer, and it acts as a webcam through USB. So if you wanna be like a webcam artist that makes money on the internet, webcamming, whatever that means, you could make a lot of money because this will not only let you do webcamming, but you could also do live streaming with it as well. Oh, and when you're using that live streaming or you're doing webcamming, guess what else it has? It has soft skin feature. So if you're Manny Mao, Moo? Moo, I think. 
Manny Mua again, and you want to make your skin look softer because you put all this stuff on it, you can use the soft skin feature. Oh, look how smooth my skin is. I'm like baby fresh. It's like a baby's bottom. And it really wasn't. It was just a skin smoothing section. There's also face priority for auto exposure, which is important that if you're in front of some bright lights that are behind you, that it's actually exposing for your face. So those features that are built in are meant for the content creators, not the vloggers, the content creators. So how much is this camera? Well, remember that the ZV-1 was $690 or is $699 right now at the time of recording this. And that's where a camera that has a lens built in and basically the whole schmageggy right out of the box, you're ready to go. Body only, this ZV-E10 is only $699. That's right, they got the price to $699 without a lens. You're talking about having all of the features that you need that people wanted, not me, but other people wanted in a vlogging content creator camera. You've got that APS-C size sensor and you have the ability to change lenses and everything else that's similar to the ZV-1 but you still need to add on a lens if you want to use it. So Sony is offering the kit 16 to 50 power zoom lens for another hundred bucks. So you're looking at $799 to get started with a lens. Now I like the ability to change lenses. I think that the everyday person just getting their first camera will have no idea what to do after they get that kit lens. They'll probably never buy another lens because when they start looking in the lens, they're not even, they're not even going to know what to look for. They may Google it or go on YouTube and find my videos or find someone else's, but they don't understand that a lens could be six, seven, eight hundred dollars. I mean, how much is the, the 35 1.2 that we're using right now? Is that like a thirteen hundred dollar lens? It's more, it's like, six, that's a more expensive a more expensive lens, but you can put a Sigma lens on here and the third party lens is working really well, but they're probably not buying a 1.2. Now, Tamron makes a brand new 11 to 20 millimeter 2.8, which could be a good option. I like having wider because 16 millimeters is like a 24 millimeter equivalent, very similar to what you have in the ZV-1. I also want to point out the other camera sitting on the desk. This is the Canon M50. Mark II. I took the M50, the original one, to Paris as my vlogging camera with a 10 to 22 millimeter lens because it was light, it was easy to take there, it only gave me 1080 at the time, but it got the job done because it has the dual pixel AF, and dual pixel AF is the bee's knees. Is it the knees bees? No, it's the bees knees. It's like the hottest thing on the streets right now is dual pixel AF. So you have to look at your options because that's $699 with a 15 to 45 millimeter lens. But I do think that the, the M system will be going away and Canon may not be supporting it much longer, but it is still a very nice option, but it doesn't have a lot of the features that the ZV-E10 has. So what do I think about this camera? How did it do? To be honest with you, the video footage is pretty good. I mean, it's amazing they got the price so low for a APS-C size sensor and the ability to change lenses. We actually like the video quality. Is it perfect? Is it on par with a $6,000 setup? No, not really, but it's not terrible. Now, in terms of build quality, no, it's not built extremely well. It's not Ford tough whatever that means. It's not the new Ford Lightning. This is something you wanna be very careful with because it does feel super light in the hands. If you drop it, it's probably all over for this camera and you're going to have to replace it. Could you thumbs up this video for me? I wanna see if we could hit the most thumbs up we've ever had, which I don't even know that number, but let's get to it. There is a little bit of a learning curve with this camera, obviously if you're new, but if you've used a bunch of Sonys in the past and you start using this camera, you're gonna fight with it a little bit, and which is kind of odd because we use these, we use Sony all day, every day for a lot of things, or we've been using them for years. And the issue is, if, if we're fighting the camera, I think that most people are gonna end up fighting the camera, trying to be like, why isn't the focus doing what I want? What setting should I be on? Why is the active track or the, the, the stabilization not working with this lens? We put on multiple Sony lenses where it's like image stabilization is not active or not available with this lens. I don't know if that's a firmware issue. Now this is firmware 1.0, so I believe that this is a full-fledged, ready-to-go retail unit 
but I do expect that they will put out firmware updates probably with our feedback and other creators' feedbacks who have been playing with the camera so that when it does get into other people's hands, there will be corrections made. At the end of the day, do you buy this? If you're new, do you go into the Sony ecosystem? Do you go into the Canon ecosystem? Look, if you wanna do stills and photos, the M50 Mark II is an awesome entryway into photography and video. You have the EVF, you have the APS-C size sensor, you're, you have the dual pixel AF. But I think that Sony's gonna do one of their really good jobs marketing this camera for people. And I think that the creators that want, the wannabe creators, and I don't mean that in a bad way, that, that this is a good option. But if you do not wanna change lenses, if you do not wanna ever bother with that, then the ZV-1 may be a good option. If you want better quality between ZV-1 and this ZV-E10, the ZV-E10 is going to be better than the ZV-1, and it's basically the same price, 100 bucks more when you add on a lens. So if I had to flip a coin between two of those, Steven, you're going with the new one, the ZV-E10 also? Yeah, we're going with the ZV-E10 also, unless you just wanna throw it in your pocket when you go to Disney World, because then you have the option and you don't have to worry about anything else. But if you're just starting out as a creator, looking to build a little bit, Having the versatility of the bigger sensor is going to be a good option and having the ability to add lenses in the future is gonna be better for you. So that's where I'm gonna leave it. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Polinfronosphoto.com. See ya. Oh, oh, that hurts. I'm not breathing hard, you're breathing hard. Miss the net for a change. I'm really good at that. Ah, f oh, I'm good for like 30 seconds. I don't suck for that bad for an old man. Off the post. Ah, f suck. I failed at the little kid's drill. Man, I'm worse than those mighty dicks, man. Can I miss the net? Of course I can miss the net. Ah. Oh, that was horrible. That was terrible. Oh my God. It's time for a shift change, bro. Everything burns. The back, the legs, the lungs. I'm so old. I am a hockey master. I am a master of hockey.